heaven's California Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be reacting to Mr. Nightmare for really creepy true home alone horse home alone stories. So this is my third video of three. Um, let me just cut uh, you guys uh, before I start this video like I did in the first two. My wisdom teeth removal is tomorrow and I'm really anxious for it. So if you guys see me like kind of fidgety or kind of like oh, I'm nervous as hell, it's because I, I really am nervous and I've never had a like operation Asian before. It's not necessarily an operation, but like, you still have to cut maybe even, even, even through bone. And that is scary. Like once it is done, it's kind of like it's done, right? You don't have to throw really it out over again. Uh, I've never really... I don't think I've ever been on general anesthesia. I will be asleep, so my friend will be recording it. Uh, my friend Lexus, as you've seen in future and past videos, sorry, will be recording it, hopefully. And if I have any stupid reactions, which I'm assuming I will, I don't I still don't say something and nothing too bad, because if I do, oh lordy. So that's just how I say it's not gonna end, end up good. But anyway guys, I know you guys I, I know what you guys are here for, so but I'm just trying to let you guys know that first, just because whatever if I act differently, then you guys know what's wrong with me right now. But yeah, so this is four really creepy true home alone stories, and home alone st stories are actually my favorite. But they they make me be kind of nervous because it is midnight right now, so like I do not want any like you know. Oh my god, my what's twelve plus twelve? No, what's twelve? My 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 surgery is in fi fifteen hours. Dear Lord, help me. Well, I gotta relax. Anyway, guys, let's just get into this before I have a freaking panic attack. Hopefully this will get me my mouth out because I don't. I just don't. I'm probably gonna have to take it. I lived in Sydney, Australia. This happened when I was 15 and home alone. It was about 9 p.m. and I was just coming out of the bathroom when I heard my front gate swing open and my dog begin barking. Across the hall, I saw someone run past the porch window and into the backyard. I was able to vaguely make out what he looked like. He was hunched over, had sickly pale skin, was wearing all black, and had long, messy black hair partially covering his face. Ew. I went into the living room to see what was going on. My dog was still at the front door growling. Since I hadn't seen the guy return, this meant he was still somewhere in my backyard. I waited at the door for a while, when another, more normal looking guy walked onto the porch and came right up to the security bars. I don't remember all the details, but our conversation went something along the lines of him saying, Hey, have you seen my friend? I replied, Yeah, I think he's in my backyard. He replied saying, Okay, because I've been following this random guy all over the place. I think he's on drugs and might be dangerous. It struck me as weird though. What did he mean by this random guy when he had just called him his friend? His friend. He quickly walked away going off into the darkness towards my yard. And now, and now they're both kind of sus. I also mention that there's a door around back, but that also has security bars in front of it, and the door was locked at the time. Okay. I waited at the front door for a bit, then sat back down. After about two minutes of waiting, the guy I spoke with walked back onto the porch and looked in through the security bars. He now had the pale, potentially drugged out guy with him, who was pacing back and forth in an agitated manner. I went to the door to see what he wanted. He said, hey, sorry man, I just found him. Look, he's really nervous. He'd like if you unlocked the door and came out here, just so he could see that you're harmless. That's so random. In my chest. The creepy, drugged out guy had stopped pacing now, and was standing unnaturally still, oh, like staring why? dead in the eyes. Why do you have him to reassure him? You don't even know him. uncomfortable silence. That's so random. I didn't say anything, but stepped forward to push the French door shut causing the second guy to lunge at me and shove his hand through the bars towards me. I jumped back and slammed the door shut with my foot, bolting it. I called my parents, and they called the police. The two men had gone. When the police arrived, they told me about a break-in that had occurred just down the street less than an hour ago. As far as I know, they never found the two guys. Looking back, it's likely that the first guy ran into the backyard to try to find a way in. And the second guy went to help him. Yeah. Which is why they were back there for so long. What disturbs me is the fact that they didn't want to just break in, nor did the fact that I was home deter them. They wanted me to come outside to them, or to get into where I was. 
That's cre creepy. Some random guy at the shooter study and he says he's, he's your friend. Yeah, it's kind of freaky. Don't, uh, don't answer the door on your one. Just, just don't do it. It's a Thursday night. My mom was working a late shift at the hospital. Okay. My two brothers were away at college. So for the time being, I had the house to myself. Of course you did. I had a couple friends over. We watched a baseball game, had a few beers, and they left through the back door. I went upstairs to the kitchen to put the remainder of the beers in the fridge and get ready for bed. I went to bed shortly after, and after a while of laying down trying to actually fall asleep, I heard light footsteps coming up the stairs outside my room. <sighs> my mom was home. I heard her cough as she passed my bedroom door and entered the bathroom. Then she went back downstairs to the kitchen and started making a lot of racket with the cabinets and dishes and whatnot. I was way too lazy to get out of bed to go down there. Yeah, but is it your mom? Down. It, so is I just it really texted her instead to stop making so much noise. I put my phone back on my desk and flipped on my side <coughs> to try to get comfortable. And then she probably messaged saying, what the fuck are you talking about? I heard footsteps coming back upstairs. Quickly. My bedroom door opened, and my mom stepped into my room. The hallway light outside my room wasn't on, so I couldn't make eye contact with my mom. But when I looked up, I saw my mom's figure. She stood by the doorway, looking kind of slouched over. I told her to stop making so much damn noise in a rather annoyed tone. When she didn't respond, I sat up and said, Mom? A vibration on my desk let me know I got a text. And given that it was pretty late, I naturally checked my phone to see who it was. Yeah, see, that's not her mom. It was from my mom. Yep. She said, I'm still at work. I dropped my phone onto my bed as I looked up at the doorway. That person standing at my doorway wasn't my mom. Even though I was panicking, I had to think on my feet. Yeah. I said, Mom, I need to get to sleep. Get out. I said this because I wanted to play dumb. Yeah. Act like I had no suspicion that someone had broken in. Makes sense. The person at my doorway didn't move. So I picked up my phone, texted my mom in a panic, saying there's someone in the house. I mistook them for her and to call the police right now. My mom replied back, okay, in a matter of seconds. Something then broke the silence in the room. What? The voice of a woman, crackly and rough. She started saying something. It sounded to me like she was saying, don't know where to go, over and over. Or Her don't voice be started here. getting louder, as I realized she was approaching my bed. I screamed, get back, as I fumbled for the lamp switch next to my bed. As the light turned on, I was faced with some old woman with white, wiry hair, with her wrinkled hands reached out at me, approaching my bed, repeating that phrase, don't know where to go. I screamed, get away from me. Probably some kind of mentality. She was about she to attack me. I jumped off the bed and ran out of the room and held my door shut. Seconds later, I felt her trying to push the door open, and I put all my weight up against it to keep it shut. She started screaming, I need to get out, and started banging on the door. Yeah, how'd held you get in here? position for the longest time. She was relentless. Like, how'd you even get in here? My mom kept calling my phone, but I couldn't pick it up. It wasn't until the cops arrived and knocked on the front door that I let go of the bedroom door and ran to them. The old woman immediately came rushing after me, but as I opened the door and yelled at the cops to stop her, they immediately pinned her against the wall. She was in cuffs and was put in the police car. I told them everything that happened. I said based on how she was behaving and what I told them, she would need to be identified and evaluated to determine if she was mentally ill. Yeah, and it probably. later turned out she was, to no surprise. I found out later that night after the cops left that after my friends left through the back door, I forgot to lock it. Oh. That was how she managed to simply walk into my house. That makes sense. It's definitely scarred me mentally in the sense that any time I hear something in my room while sleeping... I have to look up and make sure somebody isn't standing on the other side. That's cre creepy. And just having that, I would not even know what the house was like. I do not even want to think about that. Like literally, I, I like you saw my chair my head. I wanted to make sure the door was locked, which it is. Before moving off on my own to California, I lived basically in the middle of nowhere on my dad's ranch in Colorado. That's kind of creepy. It was a beautiful, huge property. I just never loved living in a rural setting. I found it boring. Plus, as that old cartoon <coughs> Purge the Cowardly Dog stated, creepy things happen in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you think? There had been a number of times that people had trespassed on our property, which is why my dad owned three different guns. Oh, shit, okay. 
There was one time he had to chase two men off the property with his rifle. Oh, damn. What I'm about to tell you happened a few years back. I think it was in the middle of June. I was home alone as my parents were on vacation together, and my little brother was out with friends or at his girlfriend's house for the night. I don't remember. Okay. It was a hot night for Colorado, so I had all the windows open. No, I see. I used to go to sleep pretty late around that time. I guess I think it was around 1 in the morning. I was still in the living room watching TV. Okay. When I noticed the motion-sensing patio light turn on outside. This light would only turn on due to very noticeable movement by a person. So immediately, I assumed it was my little brother returning home. To be safe, I got up and looked out the window. I didn't see anyone, though. I took out my cell phone and called my brother real quick. Yeah. He didn't pick up. So I went to sit back down. Then it started. The knocking at the front door. Our door had a peephole because obviously anyone coming to our house went out of their way to get there. So we'd need to know who was there before opening the door. Yeah, makes sense. When I went to go peek through the peephole, I didn't see anyone. So I'm immediately thinking Ding Dong Ditch. Possibly some local punky kids, possibly my brother. I was hoping the second was the case. I shut the blinds now because I became paranoid that I was being watched. I shot my brother a text saying, if I find out it's you, I'm not letting you in. Moments later, there was a knock right behind my head. So loud I actually jumped off the couch. Oh, shit. It was a knock at the living room window, followed by what I can best describe to be two voices, one a deep male voice, one a higher-pitched female voice, saying, we see you simultaneously. So it's not your brother. Heart racing. I imagined it to be the most wishful thing I could think of. That it was my little brother and his girlfriend messing with me. Oh, that's possible. In the moment, it but, made like, sense. Deep-ass voice? Or how, maybe how I just wanted he? it to make sense. How was your brother? The banging on the window didn't stop there. It kept going. But it moved to another window. This time the window in the dining room, where I didn't shut the blinds. From the angle I was standing at, I could see two figures at the window. But no chance could I see anything about their faces. I didn't look at them as I ran upstairs to my dad's room to get one of his guns from under his bed. There you go. He told me exactly where he kept it just in case of an emergency. I loaded the rifle and ran downstairs to the dining room window. But they weren't standing there anymore. Oh no, where are they? With a loaded gun, I felt a lot more confident in opening that front door and going outside to confront the situation. Yeah. When I stepped outside, I decided I'd do one full quick lap around the house and check on the cattle. I was no marksman, but I had the protective instincts for the property, and I was ready to use the gun if I needed to. No, you have the gun. I'm, I, I'd say you're pretty safe. The whole property seemed clear, and the cattle were fine. So I went back inside, checked every door, and went to bed upstairs. I wouldn't want to go to that that. For half an hour, peace and quiet, until I heard a disturbing sound come from downstairs and outside. Someone was frantically pounding at the front door downstairs, accompanied with a man shouting at the top of his lungs, not shouting words or anything, just screaming. I grabbed the rifle next to my bed, ran to the living room window, pushed it open, and fired around outside into the dark night. Oh, shit. The screaming and pounding stopped, and I heard two sets of footsteps quickly stomp off the wooden porch. Yeah. And there was nothing but the sound of the night crickets. The rest of the night, nothing happened. Actually, nothing ever happened again until I moved out. Mm. But it was not my brother and his girlfriend. I found out the next day. My dad was proud of me when he heard I protected the property. I'm just grateful my dad has those guns. And I only agreed with his owning them even more after that. Yeah, it can be pretty safe to have them. It's not like if you're in a fucked up situation. There you go, just got a gun. It's like, bitch, I have a gun. Do you want to die? See, that's why they ran away. Otherwise I was home stayed. alone one night in the spring. I was on a FaceTime call with my friend, at one point pacing back and forth in my room. Why? When I passed the window and looked outside at one point, I saw someone outside on the street, just standing there, facing my house, facing my window. Oh, God. I looked a little more carefully and determined he was looking up right at my window. I told my friend Jordan on the FaceTime call and tried to show her. 
She said she couldn't see him but to call my mom and dad. So I hung up with Jordan and continued to look out at the man for a few more seconds. Then I walked away from the window to my bed and called my mom. Okay. I had woken her up because it was like midnight. In short, she told me to just turn off my lights and shut the blind and he would go away. So yeah. that's what I did. But after a few minutes of dying in curiosity, I had to get up, lift the blinds, and peep outside. The man was now on the sidewalk, closer to my house, still looking up at my window. Now I called the police, and the operator asked me if the man was holding any weapons. I said not that I could tell. The operator then told me to ignore it, and if he didn't leave within ten minutes, or if he stepped onto my property, to call the police again. She also told me that a patrol car would pass by my house just to scare off the man should he still be out there. Okay. So I hung up the phone and crawled into my bed. I called my friend Jordan back, and we talked on FaceTime while I was in my bed for about five minutes. She told me it was time to go check the window again, and so I did. And this time, the man was gone. I stood by the window, with the blinds now up, waiting for the police car to pass my house. It took about five to ten minutes of standing there on FaceTime with Jordan before I saw a police patrol car come down the block, stop briefly in front of my house, and the little spotlight on the side of the car being moved around my property and a few neighboring properties. Yeah. The cop car drove away soon after, and that was that. That told me the man was gone, not on my property. So after finishing my FaceTime call with Jordan, we hung up and I went to bed. Oh god, it starts on over yet though. After laying in my bed for a solid 20 minutes, I heard a creaking or a cracking like sound coming from outside. I got out of bed and looked out the window, but no one was there. So again, I went back to bed. A few more minutes went by, and there was another cracking sound coming from outside, this time louder. I looked over to the window from my bed, and was in total shock when I saw a figure at my window. <laughs> an upstairs bedroom, and suddenly the cracking noises made sense. He had been climbing up the side of my house. I went to the other window and screamed help over and over, hoping my neighbors would hear. I also got on the phone with 911 again and told them to send another car right away. The man at my window attempted to squeeze through the opening in the window, but seemingly gave up when he noticed one of my neighbors outside yelling something. Okay. The next time I looked at the window, he was gone. And according to my elderly neighbor who came to my aid, the man jumped down and ran away down the street. Cops came once again. This time I spoke to them and gave them all the info they needed. They said they'd be patrolling the immediate area all night and went on their way. I didn't get any sleep that night, but I think that man was scared off for good. say it's just it's terrifying to think that like i don't know it's just like i just i don't know it's scary shit like you're just at home you're just chilling and then uh, like that like that's like there's a window right there that's like me looking up and i see some bitch right there and i'm like what the fuck do you want like what do you want from me like you st st stupid bitch or like right there, some bitch is out the window, and I'm like, what do you want? Like, well, I'm not sad, I'm like, freaking having a freaking pan 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 panic attack as if I'm not already for tomorrow. Like, damn, that would ter terrify me even more, dear lord. And I'll not be able to sleep. Nope. But, <clears throat> yeah, that's probably not a good video to watch at any time at all, ever. I'm not, I'm, I'm not home alone, but still. Scary shit, though. Scary shit. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Just be careful when you're home alone. Just make sure, like... I, I can't just say make sure that, like, you always have, like, some... Like, make sure to have, like, some kind of weapon ready, maybe, if something happens, or... Like, for me, I have a giant knife over there. Like, I know there's a big-ass knife over there, so, like, that's obviously... I don't know if that's there for that reason, but it's just always been there for years now, so... I, I, I don't know. I swear I got a heard noise. Okay, I'm just gonna end this video before I freaking... I can't ask my sister. I know it's my sister. It is my sister, right? Yeah, it's my sister. Okay, good. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you guys think below. And yeah, peace out. Wish luck for tomorrow.